All right, getting a late start here, but welcome back to the Ram Revival. Not sure how we're going to handle the wind outside. It's getting dark on me real fast, but this is the bottom side of the skid plate. We have cleaned the top of the skid plate real nice and the brackets, everything for like the nth time. This one is going to dust up real quick, kind of get it clean, probably go grab a brush. I've got the braces down here. I'm going to hit those as well. Just a fresh batch of uh, Adam's car wash soap and water. And uh, we're going to go to town on it before I totally run out of daylight. So uh, this is step one of our reinstallation. We're just going to try to clean it up just a little bit. All right, got uh, totally chased away by mosquitoes last night. It was the worst inundation I've ever seen. Got this back out, this side got a little dirty from everything draining down, saw horses are filthy. Uh, I actually hit the tank straps with ballastol, and I was afraid to put the ballastol on this because I wasn't sure how it would react. But this area here, <laughs> like the one super clean spot, that's actually ballastol. Uh, same thing over here, if you take a look, all of this is not ballastol that is ballastal so ballastal actually does a freaking amazing job if you're using this volume of ballastal you will need to be outside definitely don't take any chances you don't want that smell inside but let's go inside all right so the tank it actually the lighting here is always terrible i have this door crack so i don't like sweat to death in here i have to put it down because mosquitoes and spiders come in but uh just take my word for it it looks really good and what I want to do now is get my hat off real quick and take you through this corridor. Okay, so bear with me. All right, where did I? Here's the light. Okay, this can't really tell much, but. I've cleaned it. I've cleaned it a lot, minus this crud here. That was dropping all over me. I was mainly concerned with this area. I wish I could, like, get home or have more time on the weekend because the natural light would let me see this really well. Now, the majority of this is going to be accessible the rest of the time. Uh, this was kind of cleaned. We're not done. That's not cleaned. Like, do you see the contrast? You sort of have, like, the gray, <laughs> dark gray. Uh, that's just like soot, road debris, dirt over the years, right? But we've kind of hit the frame rails and everything, even the exterior, because, again, think back, right here, that's one of our tank straps. This would be the, which one would it be? <laughs> kind of lost my place here. But that is a tank strap, and everything there is going to be occluded by the tank. You're not going to be able to do anything with it, right? The other tank strap should be right there, where she blows. So same thing, you won't be able to clean that because you'll have a giant gas tank here. So that's what you want to spend the time on cleaning if you are so inclined. But this, off of the, you know, come to your mounting point for your strap, come down that brace, that's going to be where your strap goes. The front one is going to be the longer of the two straps. So it's up here on this mount. To get to the rear one, again, come across, find your mounting stud. That's going to be the gold piece right there below our EVAP and fuel line. I just ran into the electrical connector for your third piece of the puzzle. This one is on the cross member too. It just comes down and it's like in line with the frame rail. That is your rear tailgate side fuel tank strap slot. So the connections we have to make as we go up, and I can see now I need to hit this. I hadn't done the front side, I guess, but the connections we need to make are going to be fuel right here, evap right there, and then hanging down is what, ah, <laughs> scared the snot out of me, is the electrical. So, I guess I'm going to brush that, and it sucks because I just shot back this. Maybe I won't. Maybe I'll just leave it. Um, it's just the lighting down here really sucks, and then I wear safety glasses, and they fog over because no one can manufacture anti-fog safety glasses quickly becoming a pet peeve of mine <laughs> but uh yeah I'll, I'll probably spend some time cleaning but the tank itself is ready to roll it's ready to be put in we got the carter in there the other area that you might want to clean is going to be right up there uh sort of above and beyond where you'll have your vent and your filler hose so i'll also pull those and we'll try to get a better idea of what size we need to run 
uh, spin those in so we don't have to use a slotted. I much prefer to use a hex driver when possible, uh, whether that's a ratchet and socket because it's a freak size or a nut driver. But yeah, we've got a little bit more cleaning to do. I don't know that I can have this done in time to get the tank up tonight, at least to do a good job of it, so it's probably going to be me getting the sawhorses in, getting the door down so mosquitoes don't come in, and then continuing to clean. But we are cleaning, uh, whether it matters or not in the broader scope of things, just peace of mind. <laughs> so uh, we cleaned this really good up there and then this frame rail kind of cleaned up decent the issue I've got is just everything drags across and it's really kind of a pain in the butt but I switched from soap and water to detailer seeing if it would help it does not seem to but like I've kind of hit all of this you know not thoroughly but we have it clean this frame rail is looking pretty decent again a lot of it's going to be covered up by the tank so well, that's it. I'm tired of being on the creeper again, and I'm going to get these safety glasses off and get back to some cleaning, uh, particularly, again, just the area occluded by the tank. This frame rail, I don't care about. I can deal with that any time, or we'll hit it before the exhaust goes on or something. But if you want to clean, this is your one opportunity to do it. You can get all the rocks, tar, debris, whatever. Check for rust if you're in the rust belt. Knock off salt and whatever you need to do, this is your chance, so take advantage of it. And uh, I'm going to do just that, and get everything shut down, get my stuff back inside, lock out the mosquitoes, and just continue on on our cleaning spree. Alright, so I got home uh, relatively early here, just a little after 6 o'clock, and everything is spick and span on the skid plate. Tank is super clean. Uh, what we're going to do now, I've cleaned the truck up. It was absolutely filthy. It looked clean, but uh, tons of just like dirt on layers. Uh, cascades down your arm because you're working underneath it on a creeper but I've got that pretty clean we're gonna take a look at that and then I'm gonna start sliding this stuff under and get the tank in place. I'm trying to use the natural light here it seems always conflict of interest we have a light with it we're here camera is towards the cab center of the truck obviously going back that way rear end spare tailgate so uh, there is our first brace cleaned it up real nice second one kind of see the stud right there uh, that's for our straps we've got our connectors that we've cleaned frame rail again <laughs> like spent a lot of time on this you're not really gonna see it but you'll never get back to this area everything here you'll have access to same thing on that side but that tank is big and it includes everything so this is my first time seeing this <laughs> since last night like that's untouched right we have not touched that haven't cleaned it cleaned like you can kind of see the difference it's not perfect but it's better and the main areas i was concerned about is kind of here okay that's that's your two holes that are tapped that's going to be where the front strap is going to have the bolts actually hold it in place or skid plate i should say not strap in that instance so that's our two tapped holes for the skid plates and if we come back here the other glaringly clean area, you guessed it, that's where the rear skid plate brace bolts up. So, like I said, it's not perfect, but the areas that we cannot get to, like right up there above our vent and fill, they're clean. <laughs> they look pretty bad gum good by frame rail standards. So, obviously right there you can kind of see where I stopped cleaning. Again, access to that anytime. This was just sort of for the occluded areas. Uh, right here I cleaned up the electrical connector last night. It's looking good. Same thing with our EVAP and same thing here. Uh, all this crud that was there last night, that's what fell down all over me and right here. <clears throat> I don't know for certain, but many many years ago, I think I was possibly a senior in high school, I was hauling a crud ton of oil. <laughs> and, uh, I put it in like those big, uh, it's not Tupperware, but you know, like the cheap plastic containers, you know, and like you need a bigger one. And so I, I had lids on it, I had it sealed. Somehow it started leaking, and I was totally unaware of it. I was on my way to dump it, and I just had oil drip, drip, drip. It kind of went down under the bed mat, and then somehow got down here on the underside and was leaking. I'm inclined to say that's how all that dirt, like you'll see back there, you'll see up here, you know, this should see way more debris than this area. And you're like, why was that area so dirty? I think it's the oil leaked, dried, and then attracted dust. That's what I'm thinking. Uh, it's like 85% clean. Again, we can at least access that area, but everything that I can't really get to is 
pretty dead gum good. So uh, a couple nights of free time, but I think it's worth it in the end. And what I'm going to do now is start sliding all of that crud, the tank first, <laughs> into this area. So one more time, I think this actually works well with just the natural light in this case. On the cross member, I know we go over this, but I want to highlight it for people. If you come in, you've got your EVAP, all of your connections in this vicinity, right? This cross member drops down and it has the brace for the strap. This is your rear strap, okay? That is your rear stud. You come up, that's under the bed, basically. This is our dividing line. Where you see my hand, like this is the cab here, this is the bed here, okay? All right, so as I was saying, the bed, first cross member, front side of the bed, you've got your stud for the strap, you've got your slot keyway for the strap. Obviously this side gets the 15 millimeter nut, uh, I say that by socket size, this gets the keyed end of your strap. This is a short strap. We leave the bed, we get to the gap, we come under the cab. This is all done from the driver's side, where I'm laying on the creeper. So right here is the stud. This is the first cross member, obviously, underneath the cab at the rear. Okay, so that's where we're orienting everything. You come and you trace. We get right here. You can kind of see it. Cowboy hat, that's our keyway for the fuel tank strap. That's why it's longer. If you look at them side by side, I always tell you the front one is longer. Think about it. They're going to be equal points here, you know, on the cross member braces. This one goes down, over, and then all the way up to the bottom of the cab, essentially. Whereas this one goes down under the tank and back up, but it only has to go to this height. It's not going up to right below the floor of the bed, if you will. So that's the difference. If you cross them, a rear cross member is shorter, front cross member is going to be taller. So I think that's about all we can do. So we'll put this stuff in place and I'll try to kind of get it uh, jacked up. Again, you could probably do this by hand. I've got a transmission jack, so I'm going to use it. That said, the floor jack honestly might have worked a little better. I'm not going to say that because the transmission jack is a special item. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm going to humor myself and just get it back in place. Again, in my case, we've evacuated all of the fuel, so it's not going to be that big of a hazard for us uh, in terms of getting that thing up in place. It's not heavy, but it is a pretty long tank, so you might have issues there. And then obviously, any little bit of fuel you have in there, bank on about six pounds a gallon. So if you estimate to have half a tank, you're probably like 78-ish, you know, somewhere in that range. If you got a quarter of a tank, you'd probably have like 30 to 40-ish. Uh, full tank, well, good luck to you, sir. <laughs> so again, just kind of be aware of what you're working with for your own safety. But I'm going to grab everything, get it slid over here, get it into place, and I'll do my best. It's just really hard to showcase this stuff when the tank is here. So I think we'll probably get it over. I might key the straps in, and then we might make the connections, and then lift up. And probably the last thing we do would be put the nuts on the studs, and that would, of course, bring it up all the way. That's the tentative game plan. And then in our case, we do have the skid plate, so we'll hit that after, obviously. If we put it up right now, we'd have problems. Tank would never go in. So uh, pretty happy with how it turned out, though. So I'm going to quit rambling, and uh, we're going to get this thing going. All right, I told you I would do this to showcase it before this went away. And what we have is a quarter drive socket. I'm going to place it right here. It is too small. does not fit the fastener. So you think, okay, 5 sixteenths. Same thought I had when I was under the truck. <laughs> too big. It literally slips over and doesn't catch anything. So, what is between quarter and 5 sixteenths? Well, quarter bunched out to 30 seconds would be 8 30 seconds. 5 sixteenths doubled to get to 30 seconds is 10. This would be 9 <laughs> 30 seconds, which is crazy. Uh, you're not usually going to find that. Ironically, some of the German socket sets do include it. It's one of those sizes you would almost never use. The other option is, is it metric? This is a 7. The 7 actually fits. Now, it's a little loose, but it does fit. It's totally functional. Same thing over here on the fill. <laughs> it actually fits a little more snug, but probably just the dirt on there. But yeah, it's a 7 millimeter will get you by, or if you've got it, I'm inclined to say 9.30 seconds would work as well. If I had one here, I think I've got one somewhere, 
I'm pretty sure it would fit a little tighter than the 7, but that's a crazy deal. Most times when you buy nut drivers, which is what I always use for clamps, you're not going to get a 932nd, so that's kind of one of those crazy one-off deals, but I just wanted to showcase it with good lighting. Again, these would be the same size clamps that we have on this side that go to our vent tube and the fill tube that are metal, so crazy stuff, but if you're doing it, 7mm, probably going to be your best bet. I kid you not, I spent 10 minutes looking for this thing, ratchet intact in tow with our fuel pump spanner wrench. Uh, what happened, I believe, is the night that the mosquitoes were so bad and the wolf spiders were coming in, I had to come in. I've got a little detail creeper that I sit on. This was underneath the detail creeper, which would explain why I couldn't find it anywhere that seemed practical. So, I uh, got that taken care of. I did want to highlight it's important that you tighten that down. You can do as much as you can now. And if we actually, I don't know if I can do this one-handed with this little heat shield here, maybe we can get the thing to roll straight. Um, this is lifted, it's four wheel drive. This did not want to go. I think the tank would have made it without the fuel pump sliding under the axle, not 100% sure. Definitely wouldn't have make it with the fuel pump. You don't want to ruin a brand new fuel pump by trying to force it under an axle. So I probably have to come off of our little dolly, slide it in place, then we'll lift it up, put it on the transmission jack up there. But I want to highlight this while we still can. Right here, if I take these off, <laughs> okay, this side right here, where you've got them drilled out, that's where you're going to go to the 15 millimeter bolt. I know these aren't perfect, but they're significantly better. I actually hit these with ballastal too, uh, but if you know it, everything's kind of looking similar, especially if I were to hold it, but this one is just way bigger, right? I mean, you can easily tell. So again, front strap is the long strap, or the big strap, whatever you need to call the strap, it's that one. The rear strap is going to be this much smaller, much shorter guy. So that's a very easy visual when they're kind of cleaned up. So again, whatever angle you're looking at, just know the long one is the front one, short one is the rear. So other thing that's important before I slide this sucker under there, you have the heat shield. It's held on with these guys, okay? It is literally encased by these straps, front and rear. That's why it's kind of flopping up there. There's no other fastener that holds it in place. It relies upon those. So if you're putting the straps up and the heat shield's banging around, it's in your way, you get frustrated, make sure that you get frustrated to the point that you tuck the heat shield against the tank. Uh, it would be very easy to accidentally put the straps through uh, between the heat shield and the tank. You want the strap to encase the tank and the heat shield. So, well, that's it. I'm gonna get this thing under there. We'll start putting it in place. All right. Well, not the easiest thing to do sideways on a creeper under a truck with a drive shaft and a tank falling, and your arm gonna get cut by sheet metal. But got it done. <laughs> and uh, I honestly think the floor jack method might work better, at least to get it in a position. Then maybe you could use a transmission jack. But you do have to watch that sheet metal because that stuff seems innocent. It will slice you up. That said, I've kind of got it positioned about where I think it needs to go. You can kind of see the recesses, obviously here and here. That's where your straps are going to ride. And if you look up, you can kind of see where we've cleaned and have the cross members ready. Before we do anything like that, I want to get everything connected. And so that's what we're going to do. I'll take you in there. Hopefully it's easy. You should just be push and click and lock. Uh, in this case, which is going to be significantly easier than what we just did taking it out. So again, this is the area we'll be headed right up there in our painful position. The good news is it's clean now and uh, your hair or your hat won't serve as like a dust mop on everything underneath your truck bed and cab. But yeah, that is my setup. Again, the drive shaft is actually kind of a safety deal. Uh, when you're working solo, I was obviously on the creeper, and then I used my foot, actually, to kind of pin it on the opposite side and prop that up to get the transmission jack under. Since the tank has no fuel, it's very back-heavy when you're trying to lift it, especially when you're coming in from the front. And uh, I just used my foot and the drive shaft, again, kind of kept me from having that fall down and crush me on this side. So uh, definitely advise leaving the drive shaft in or installing it because it can help you out kind of as a, a safety net, if you will. So anyway, we'll get under there, we'll get the connections made, and then we'll start trying to get this thing kind of locked into place. All right, so not the greatest lighting, but right here with the gray, that is our EVAP connection. It goes up there. It may have to be something we do when we've jacked it up some. 
this evap connection obviously we've made um, right there the standoff steel line into the black boot yellow kind of background that is your factory fuel line it is going to obviously clip over here where you see the yellow protector <clears throat> coming in right there we have our electrical connector it's again going to go over there where I can't get the camera now what you're not seeing or you might be seeing that valve it's got a clamp it's got a hose you remember it now that stuff if you recall needs to route and the way it works we have the vent is going to go right up through this gap to that fill tube right the vent tube coming off of the uh, filler neck and then this right over here tucked away kind of bent down under the frame rail is our fill line and it needs to go to the filler neck so i'm going to get those they're going to kind of keep this thing bent down and awkward probably want to get the we're not going to tighten them we're just going to get them there and there that's going to help you out immensely then we'll deal with connections the electrical one honestly there's a lot of length with that guy so i think we'll be able to plug him in anytime we want to now being best and then everything else we're going to raise up so we can get to it so i'm going to go ahead and get those out of our way probably plug that in and i'll showcase the progress to you all right i can't remember if this guy was back uh, when we last filmed but he is and this guy's here as well <laughs> and uh, you'll note there's a strap here there's a strap there and you're thinking hey you didn't go according to plan well we still did we just kind of put those in this one's gonna always be easy to get the rear and that downward cross member the front one tucks up it's kind of hard to get to there's a sweet spot where you can see it up towards the front if you're on a creeper but the reason we're filming is this uh, man that astro's battery has just gone downhill the long one but uh that is like dead on top of it the fuel line is about to plug itself in and the contention point that i had i don't think you can see either one of them anymore but it was actually i'm not sure i can i can't really tell if you're looking at it or not from there but it was the filler hose and the vent hose those things have been a problem the entire entire time i would tell you to take them off but i mean look at this you have like no access over here to get to him and i can't get to him from the driver's side so i think what we did is the best course of action but what worked for me is it was the filler hose vent hose was fine the filler hose the actual hose was touching the filler neck you know the metal body coming off of your you know fill up port right and so i just started sliding it on you could feel the tank physically start to move this way uh, I've pulled the vent hose on, I've pulled the vent hose on, and this is just like right where we need to be. So I'm going to try to get myself up here. And I think you're looking at this. I think you'll hear a click. Let's go. Hopefully you heard that more than you heard the rattle of the heat shield, but there was a click, an audible click. And I don't think I can do this with you. Yikes. <laughs> uh, I don't want to screw this up. I feel like I need to come like slightly this way to get the fuel line. Boy, howdy. <laughs> Try not to hit my head on anything. So I'm going to sadly not be able, again, if we had like someone else here, I could totally have them get a good film angle and me do it for you. But I'm just going to go ahead and take care of it. Get the fuel line on. And then I'm going to get these straps. You can kind of see them starting to come into place. It needs to go up just a little bit more. So once everything's connected, then we will use the transmission jack in the front, the Daytona in the rear, and that'll just make it much easier. I think I can manhandle this. It would be harder to do that uh, with any fuel in the tank, but I think I could just, like, if I wanted to, we could push this in and push up at the same time. That'll, of course, snug the tank up and in or out and away from you however you want to view it but uh this is a painful position i'm going to get the fuel line on and then we're going to basically get the straps in place so uh, i'll be right back well here we are it's friday night you know one of those nights where you think you might get home from work early i don't mean get off early i just mean you know like be home before six maybe and uh, that did not happen 
Uh, long story short, it's about 8.30 right now. Still haven't eaten. I've been eating around like 9.30 to 10 every night. Guess that'll be the same thing here. But I had a point of contention last night. Everything was going smooth. Got everything reconnected. This just wouldn't happen. This, granted, you know, came out of the line, so I just reattached it to the barb. Um, I assumed we could just, you know, have reverse order of operations where the uh, plastic nylon, whatever you want to call it, hose clip would come in. And it wouldn't happen. And I guess this thing just got stretched too much, probably when we had to, you know, take it apart from the complete opposite side with a pair of hose pliers. It's technically not broken. Uh, you can fit it in. It actually looks really good when you fit it in the line itself. It looks really good on the barbed end. Uh, like I said, it's not broken. There's no tear. There's no fracture. I guess it's just like been stretched just a little too much. So when I had to go get hydraulic oil for the forklift, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I snagged this and this is essentially the exact same thing as best I can tell I'm out here because I need to know because if it's not uh, I'll be running some errands tomorrow and I need to snag another one so uh, if you're curious what is it what did we grab well the only way I could do this was to go through Dorman and it is their part number 800-006 so right there uh, no information really just a retaining clip so 800 006 and there she is on the busted knuckle so i'm gonna take this thing crawl under the truck real fast and see if i can uh, get it to click in place again that's the catch like this one fits and it slides in and it seems okay but you can just pull it right off there's no audible click where they try to idiot proof everything nowadays so i'm hoping that this takes care of that for me so we're gonna go make that i don't even know how i crushed that i know how i did this it worked but i don't know what i did got like a blood blister under my nail so anyway that all aside we're gonna put this there and see if it works all right i am a little concerned but uh, there's no way you're ever gonna see back there you know where it was <laughs> I didn't actually hear a click, but I'm not able to rip the line off this time. It's just, uh, I don't know if it has to be lined up like perfectly flush. And what I mean by that is like the position, you know, if the fuel pump barb is here and we've got the factory line like right here or right here, I've got it to where it was kind of, I could bring that down, you know, the factory line down to the barb on the pump. I've adjusted it, I've shimmied it, ultimately what I wound up doing, I put this nut on a while back, of course threw some anises on it, it's got tons of play in it because I've done nothing but turn like three or four threads. I finally, using my spare hand, <laughs> while I was trying to push that on, I used this little uh, breaker bar, or uh, pry bar, and was able to kind of use a drive shaft to push that up, and I turned about two threads on that front stud. And when we did that, I got my hand free, and we just kind of came in, and like I said, I just pushed the tank, you know, like I was pushing on the heat shield, the tank side, I had my hand down in here, but I was pushing there while pulling the line towards me, and I guess that was enough to catch it, so... <laughs> I'm thinking it's okay, don't really know. What I'm gonna do is get some anti-seize and I'm gonna throw it on that uh, exposed thread there so it'll kind of run up on it. And then I guess I'll just use the Hercules impact, get these kind of tightened back up. And when we put gas, if this thing's like blowing fuel, well, you know, we're gonna see it pretty quick because I mean, that would be the pump. That's the main fuel line, you know. If it blows off, you're, you're sending a lot of gas somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> there's nowhere to collect or pull it's gonna like hit the sidewall of the you know bed there and it's just gonna trickle down so it should be pretty noticeable um it's something that we will come in and monitor we'll probably run it you know and then i'll come in and i'll physically feel there shouldn't be anything wet up there if there is i know there's a problem uh the good news is i'm wondering even if i were to tighten these straps up i kind of think i might be able to get my hand in there now getting this stupid thing off is going to be a nightmare uh they do make a tool for it i just if you look at the clearance between the pump body and the bed frame i don't know that it's going to happen <laughs> maybe like the 85 degree ones from the side but then i don't you're probably not going to line up it's just a bad setup i mean i can't candy coated anymore uh so 
I'm gonna try a couple more times, see if I can pull it off, see if I can get it to click on. Um, and then we'll just kind of put the tank in position ultimately, you know, like get these, you know, run back up all the way there. And then I'll feel around if I can still get my hand in there and make sure it feels good. Main thing, if I can't pull it off, if I can't push it off by hand, I'm gonna assume that there's like a mechanical connection for plastic tabs. And we're gonna hope that she's okay. So I'm gonna play with that and we'll see what happens. That's right. <laughs> it, is, it is a long stud, you'll need a deep socket. So I thought, you know, I'm just gonna sneak up on it with a ratchet. And then I was like, oh yeah, the stud was really long. So I just went ahead and used the impact because that's where that socket was. But we use our 15 millimeter socket. We ran this up lightly. We ran this one up. As you can see, there is daylight between the trans jack and the fuel tank. That's why we can slide it effortlessly. Same thing, I don't think you can really see, but the Daytona. If I get my hand up in here precariously, boom, lots of clearance there. So this has been lifted up. The biggest news and the best news of the process. Right up there, we can still kind of get our hands in there. Um, <laughs> not comfortably and not well, but I cannot pull the line off. So I think it's connected and we're going to hope that's the case. So the fuel tank is back up in place. It's installed. Everything's good there. I think we need to still set the clamps. We've got the hoses run up on our filler and vent. I have not tightened the clamps yet. We'll need to do that. The electrical is on. The EVAP is on. The straps are on. Everything's been cleaned. Um, I think we're getting close to bringing in the... Can't get rid of this just yet. Transmission jack because we've still got the skid plate in our case. So we'll have to uh, <clears throat> make that happen, but pretty happy with that. Is that anti-seize? I don't know what that, I thought it was anti-seize I did, but it's just like some random glob of tan stuff. So I guess that's a factory deal, but yeah, this looks a lot better than it did. If I grab a little Klein here, I mean, check that out. <laughs> Could probably polish it if we wanted to, but we're not that crazy, so. Uh, there it is. We got NICs there. We got NICs here. That way, in the event that this is a dud of a pump or we have to do this again, whether we're coming in from the top or the bottom, we're home free. If I try to get you up here one last time, uh, let's see, can I? Oh, let's just. I tell you, I need two people. I'm trying to do something cool with the light where you could see that better. And. That's what you get. So EVAP there, uh, the main EVAP connection again is going to be higher up. And then we've got electrical connection. We've got that fuel line. We got the electrical and that's that. So I think we're ready to, before I do the skid plate for frick's sake, before we do that, we are going to get the clamps on and then we'll get the skid plate in place. <laughs> and, uh, Typically, I would advise before you do anything crazy or completionist, if you are just swapping the pump, now is the time to start your truck. If your truck wouldn't start because you weren't pumping fuel and you still have fuel in your tank, this is where you'd want to make sure the pump works, right, before you do anything crazy, button it all back up. In our case, if this is a dud or we've done something wrong or a wire's broken or something or the fuel lines, and we're not going to know <laughs> for a little while. But we're familiar with this process now. It should go quicker in the future. And uh, I got to get inside and make sure I don't start a fire with the food I was cooking. So, uh, yeah, that's where we're at. And uh, we're getting close to wrapping this thing up. So uh, I'm going to head in, probably come back out here late night, get everything buttoned up and call this part of the project good. All right, so here we are on a new day. And we've got the skid plate ready to be back under the truck and installed. There's a look at it finally cleaned up. I uh, got the hardware mapped out. We're going to bring that in. We will anti-seize it as well. And uh, we're just going to slide this in place and um, probably use the transmission jack. But uh, one last look, I guess, at the tank. Got my fan going. Man, that's putting a nice breeze in with the east, <laughs> east air. But uh, right there is the tank again without the skid plate. So we're going to go ahead and get that skid plate installed. We'll walk you back through that process. Well, here we are. We've arrived at the destination. 
Driver side frame rail, untouched. Touched. See the difference? Yes. <laughs> a little ridiculous. Anywhere that looks dirty, uh, there's like weld spatter on the frame and it makes it really hard to detail that stuff. I don't really care to detail it. Again, just wanted it clean, but with the tank in here and the natural light coming in, man, that looks good. <laughs> so, again, I've kind of hit everywhere those uh, skid plate braces are going to go. That was the main thing. Places we can't get to, but just before we get it in there, like if your standard two-wheel drive don't have the skid plate, this is what you would see. And that's kind of why it was important for me to showcase. I think with the natural light, you can't tell what's going on there. If I don't hit my head, uh, you still can't tell. But I, I tried to showcase where that strap is. <laughs> and the rear strap, which is again your short one, uh, you can hopefully see kind of how that guy tucks up in there. So. Once again, cleaned it as best we can. I have also, the reason we were over here is to tighten those clamps. Again, right there, you can hopefully see my Sharpie mark, kind of at the tip of the finger there. And then on this one, we've got that orange paint marker that kind of showcases where we were. But yeah, this is how she turned out. And I uh, gotta say, I'm pretty happy with it. Natural light's doing a good job right now of letting me showcase stuff to you. So skid plate's gonna come over after I vacuum all that crud. <laughs> and uh, we're going to put it on, and this little project will be taken care of. Alright, sometimes the crit I do on my side on a creeper under a vehicle is kind of impressive. <laughs> this is one of those cases. So, of course, as fate would have it, you're not getting the transmission jack with the skid plate to roll under the truck. This truck's lifted. Uh, granted, I mean, if you've got like a 6 inch lift, you're probably fine. But anything modest or from the factory in the case of this off-road, just not going to work for you. So you slide it under, you pay, of course, attention if you're heavy duty or you've got your, uh, you know, off-road packages, the skid plates there, which are going to become points of interference for getting this skid plate back. You got it under, then your next obstacle, I suggest that you route it under this direction, under the drive shaft, if you come from this side, you know, driver's side, I should say. And once we did that, we were able to sort of just slide it up, picked up this side, started moving the transmission jack under. I've got it relatively centered. Now it's important to remember, it's been a long time since we took this thing off, so just a little recap, your front skid plate brackets are going to be equal, right? So we've got this one, say, eight inches from the front, that one's eight inches from the front. It's not an exact measurement, I'm just guessing, mainly to show you, they are in line, right? The outward frame rail on the driver's side is directly in line with the one that we're looking at. So. Coming back here, that is totally not the case. These are offset. So your inboard mount uh, going to be farther to the front. It's going to go up again right in front of your gas tank strap strut. And then coming over that way, or stud I should say, it's offset. That's the one that's going to go up on the outside of the driver's side frame rail. Important to remember that the main thing, if you just line up these two with the uh, fuel tank and the fuel tank straps and studs it should put you really really close now if you pay attention we've got lines over there and they're kind of right there <laughs> with our offset frame rail side i cannot see the frame rail from here i cannot see through a gas tank and see through a frame rail i don't know what's going on so before we tear something or force something and put a hole in the line we need to go take a look at it uh, in theory, we should just be able to raise this up if everything's clear, get it in place, and I seize our bolts. Why? Because we can. And this thing should be buttoned back up. So uh, if we want to torque those strap bolts, we'd probably want to do that now just because they're way easier to access. I'll actually go check the book and see if I can get a torque spec. Um, you want them tight, obviously. You don't want them to back off a fully loaded fuel tank. That's a lot of gas. That's a lot of weight. You don't want to drop that on the highway, so uh, we should be golden there, but I will try to see if I can find an official spec for you. I'll double check that myself, and then we'll go about getting this thing clearanced on the outside frame rail, and then everything kind of just lined up and razor on up. All right, so I think I've got everything cleared over there. I've brought one bolt over. It's going to be the one that goes right there on our skid plate strap at the front. All we got to do is start raising this thing up, so I'm going to kind of 
final position. I got the three ton jack out of the way too, so we should be going up. Looks pretty good. All right, so hopefully you kind of see what's going on there. And if I bring you over to this side, kind of want to highlight this. You again, front strap, you've got two bolts. Obviously, one of them is not installed. That would be the top one. And then on the rear, you can trace that. We've got both bolts in place, not totally tightened down. But what I did on the inside towards the drive shaft i started both of those i got this lined up i made sure that these cleared off to the side i think that's kind of what they should do uh, i think it actually could have tucked up in there um i don't really know what the best course of action would be here part of me thinks it should be outside so you can have access to it part of me says it would actually have like less strain on the inside. It almost seems like this would be better on the outside and this would be better on the inside. Might have to go look uh, at the video to kind of see what we'd done here uh, or how it was from the factory before we like totally tighten this stuff down. The good news is I think we could drop that fairly easily but I do want to point out it's quite difficult to line these holes up uh, meaning you know like you can't see them difficult. So that big locating hole in the center, you could probably stick, you know, a screwdriver, jimmy bar, something in there and work if you can deal with the wheel wheel liner, which is probably in your way. But by utilizing a light, uh, you're able to kind of then spot the threads. You know, there'll be the silver in the sea of dark. <laughs> but again, front strap, that's why I left this bolt out. Uh, you can hopefully, you know, as I start to pan that around, you'll be able to kind of like see the thread. And then again, your locating hole here is actually quite useful so front is way easier to do than that you just have better visibility but keep that in mind everything is NIC that's probably what you're seeing on the front before you get to the threads I'm just gonna double check that routing because it could go either way it's probably insignificant I feel like if you put them both inside then the low line is gonna actually like potentially chafe <laughs> so I don't really know I'm gonna have to actually go back and look at that so uh, that said, this is pretty well. What have we done there? Crushed something. A little clip that came through. Uh, <laughs> obviously, we were not paying attention to that. I may back this out and free that guy just to be nice. But uh, I looked. I could not find for the life of me a torque spec on any of this. The book doesn't even acknowledge the skid plate. The book I have anyway. So uh, just make it good and tight. Should be fine. But uh, yeah, just wanted again to highlight that you might need a light to sort of help you locate your threads, get the bolts going. I would go ahead and get these in place, tighten them a little bit, you know, kind of snug. Come in, finish off your vertical on the inboard, and then come and final tighten these. So uh, anyway, that you'll need a half socket. It fits way better than the 13 for whatever that's worth. <laughs> and uh, we'll just go to town from here. So there it is, that is the fuel tank reinstalled. Uh, again, skid plate also reinstalled. Got everything cleaned up pretty good. Again, the skid plate, I think if we hit that with some ballast so we can make it kind of shine like this spot does. So fuel pump back in, electrical connection good, evap line good, fuel line probably good. It's sort of one of those questionable things. We got our vent and the clamp redone. We got our filler neck and the filler hose reconnected. Everything is in place, tightened up. I could not for the life of me find torque specs for any of this stuff. Uh, so basically we run it in with the Hercules and then we tighten it down. I really do. I really do make a point to use the Matco and try to let it break in. But it's a difficult when you have every other ratchet that seems to do what it's supposed to do just fine. So. Uh, this is it. This is hopefully the last time we'll see this aside from you know milling around under here We got to do the exhaust uh, Route the backup camera drop the hitch to drill it for the backup camera <laughs> and 
Uh, hopefully the new pump is good from Carter. But uh, yeah, we kind of dropped it down, took the old pump out, evacuated the old fuel, put a new pump in, got everything super ridiculously clean by standards of an undercarriage of a vehicle, put it back in and have it all tightened up. So uh, that wraps up this part. Next time, I don't know if I'm going to do the exhaust. I think I want to do the backup camera first to get that routed before there's anything else in my way. I did start cleaning this. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, this is dirty, and that's clean. It's a little too dark for you to tell. Let's see if I can grab the climb. thought I was going to get to a Harbor Freight and grab a new light today, but that's what I'm cleaning on, and this is a patch where I could showcase the difference between cleaned, not cleaned, cleaned, and untouched. <laughs> so, uh, minor stupid stuff, not really relevant to much of anything, but uh, I'm down here, I can do it, so we are. But the main thing, like I said, the fuel tank is in, that chapter's behind us. Next time we mention that or do anything with it, it will actually be adding fuel, which will be new fuel, which will hopefully go into the 408 fire up and let us data log and test things. So, uh, with that said, yeah, uh, not exactly sure where we're going next, so I won't commit to it. That's sort of what we have on the itinerary backup camera, exhaust, uh, tune, <laughs> put the interior back together. Little things like that, so I uh, hope you're enjoying the process here. We're getting very close to uh, being able to actually drive the truck again, which would be crazy. But uh, yeah, that wraps it up for the Ram Revival. LoneStarMopars.com is the website. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, all three at Lone Star Mopars. Hope you had fun. Hopefully you learned something. Uh, maybe uh, have tips and tricks to offer to me. Whatever it might be, feel free to leave your thoughts down below. With that said, I'm going to end this so I can get back to starting a new project. So stay tuned for that, and I'll catch you in the next one.